Whether you're already a big fan of Altenew or you've never tried their products, you're in luck because this month Altenew has a huge release with stamps, dyes, stencils, inks, and so much more. Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel, and this video is part of their Creative Wonderland video hop. Of course, there are prizes, so be sure to check out the YouTube description box underneath this video to see all the details about how to enter to win. But for now, let's first check out the Marvelous Monthly subscription and use it to make some cards. The kit that I'm working with this month is the Build a Garden kit. It is called Blossoming Freesia, and it includes a large flower stamp as well as many multiple sub-sentiments that go with the word friend in script. So this is a very versatile set that can be used with lots of other things. There's also a die included that cuts out the friend script as well as the shadow and the flower. There's also a blending brush that's included, perfect for the stencils. And the stencils that are included are both stencils to color in the flower. They make it really easy to color in that entire bouquet of flowers in multiple colors to get the look of an actual flower. There's also a mask for the flower and there are some little polka dots on that stencil as well. So that's everything that's included in the Build a Garden kit this month. So I have my Altenew stamp wheel out as well as an A2 piece of white cardstock. I'm placing the flower in the center because I'll be able to die cut it at the end. I'm also placing some anti-static powder tool on the white cardstock and then I'll stamp it with some VersaFine Black Onyx ink, which will allow me to do some heat embossing. Now the stamp wheel is a perfect way to get a perfect impression. I got it the first time on that one. And I'll add some clear embossing powder on top. Once I tap off the excess, I'll then heat set it. That will make that black ink turn glossy once again. It will also create small walls that will make the stenciling a lot easier because you'll be able to contain it within that inked area. So the stencil, each stencil has two different components on it and kind of like a diagonal line in between. It just maximizes the stencil to give you the ability to color in every single petal and the stem on this beautiful flower. So I'll just use a set of Altenew inks that allows me to go from lightest to darkest on these petals. We'll talk more about the fresh dye inks later in the video, especially the circular pads where you can get four different shades of a color. Here I'm using the ink cubes and those are great too because you can get an entire set for a lower price point than the full-size ink pads. But you can see how it is going here, how easy it is to line up the stencil with the stamped image, and then how easy it is to add color in just the spot that the stencil has open for you. I love coloring flowers with stencils. It's so much easier to me than coloring them with markers. Next up, I have the stencil that has the mask and the dots, and I'm just adding a little bit of color around the mask and then filled in the spot with the dots. So I'll be able to shade around that entire mask. That will give me a place to put my die cut flowers. It also kind of looks cool just in white, so just depends on what you want to do. I'll stamp the friend stamp that's in script in black ink and I will be able to heat emboss that and then die cut it out because there is that shadow die that's included in the die set. But I just wanted the black ink to really match the black ink on the flower there. For the sub sentiment, I'll pick up one of the stamped sub sentiments and I'll flip it over and stamp it in white pigment ink. And then I'll use that to heat emboss with white embossing powder. It says, wishing you a great day. So there are really a lot of really heartfelt sub sentiments in this set that go along with the flower and with the word friend as well. I got a lot of foam squares there and I'll pop that up right over the white outline of the flower that we masked. 
Then I'll use some foam squares to pop up friend and a little bit of liquid glue to place wishing you a great day above that. Again, using all of those elements of this kit together makes it a really pretty card rather quickly and easily. For the next card using the Build-A-Garden Blossoming Freesia Kit, I will again stamp and heat emboss the flower image because I'm going to do another coloring with the stencils, but this time I'll use some cubings that have shades of blue. I happen to have another of those blender brushes that is a part of the kit. I love this brush. It's the perfect size for my hand and it's the perfect size for stencils like this, which you're going to color multicolors. So it's not too small, not too big, and you're able to get into tight spaces. And because it's a brush, it's not going to get caught on the edges of a fine stencil like some of these little openings are very fine and need the details of the bristles of a brush to really get in there and cover them up. Again, really easy to create that colorful image. Use the die to cut it out. This time I am using the dots vertically on the left hand side of my card. I just chose an ink slightly darker than the cardstock I was using. I'm also placing the mask down where I think I'm going to place the flowers down. So this time I have them from the top coming down into the card and I'll just use the mask as a way to create a slightly shaded area around the flowers. Since they are die cut and have the white edge, I like having that little shaded effect to add a little bit more dimension. Again, I am stamping and heat embossing with white embossing powder the sub sentiment that says 2A Fabulous. And this time I die cut the friend die cut. It's a script word. I die cut it out of some mirror cardstock. And instead of placing it on a shadow, I'm just placing it below the sub sentiment, which I think looks really nice. I love this Alta New gold spritz. So I like to take the cap out and use the stem that's inside the bottle to tap on it and make some spritzed gold little droplets there. I'm popping up the freesia at the top and again like I said there's a little bit of shading underneath that is a really nice touch just to add a little bit something special and extra there. And those gold splatters. I always love them on any card. I realized that the dot to the eye was missing and it was stuck inside the die. So I just used my tool in one to pop it out and now it is where it's supposed to be. Now let's check out some of the ink colors and use them to make some cards. Altenew sent me several sets of their fresh dye inks and what I love about these round containers is that they lock. So you'll know when those two lines are together the ink top can't come off, which means that your pad is being protected from the air. I really like that a lot. So I wanted to swatch out the colors that they sent me. First, we have pink crystal, mauve, berrylicious, acai berry, pastel sunrise, canyon clay, burnt red, mahogany bark. Then we have icy lemonade, oolong tea, citronella, green gold, misty moor, marshland, sea forest, mangrove root, then we have aloe vera, matcha tea, swamp green, oak moss, sand dunes, rocky shore, mocha, and espresso. And I've linked them all below in their bundles. So I'm actually using an ink set that I forgot to swatch out. It is the Glacier Caves ink set. And I'm using the Falling Stars bundle. It has this great stencil with some stars as well as a couple of sentiments that say dream and shine. I've masked off dream and shine just to make sure I don't go over that. And I have all the colors from Glacier Caves on these stars. I absolutely love the blue colors in that set. Here's a different blending brush. I love these as well. They're great for slightly larger areas. And I'll use one to add some ink to the edges of an A2 piece of cardstock. I don't need the whole cardstock dark blue because I'm using this as a matte, but I do want it 
to match the colors that I'm using on the card. I'll also use the remnants of that with a little spritz of water because Altenew inks are water reactive to add some spritz of blue on that starry background. Then I'll use the dyes to cut out dream and shine. I'll add some tape runner on the back of the stars and spritz and mat it on that edged cardstock that we created and then pop up on some small foam squares, both dream and shine and that completes this easy to make card. So we've already stenciled with the inks, let's try something else. I'm using the Nature's Wonders inks and the tiled chevron embossing folder. So I've embossed white cardstock and I'm swiping the inks along the cardstock that's been embossed and you can see it creates this beautiful color combination as well as pattern because the edges of the embossing folder stand out as white. I'll spritz some of that gold on there again and then another way you can use these inks is just to swipe them on cardstock to create die cuts. So I cut out a couple of flowers. I'll use one of the sentiments from the Uplifting Sentiments stamp set. They also come with dies and I'm using my stamp wheel to stamp out the sentiment that says nothing compares to you in Versamark ink. I'll add some gold embossing powder on top, tap off the excess and then heat set that. I love gold embossing powder especially in a high impact sentiment like this one. I'll use the die with a little bit of tape to hold it in place and run it through my die cut machine. And then I'll use some foam squares on the back to pop it up in the center of the card. I'll also pop up those die cut flowers that I used to create with the ink. And then I have some enamel dots or circles to add for the flower centers. For this next card, I'm using Luxurious Motifs embossing folder as well as the Martian Terrain ink set. And instead of doing a linear type of ink blending, I'm just kind of putting color down in different spots and then adding in other colors as well. So you can see it just creates a really fun looking, almost like a pottery background. I'm using another one of those uplifting sentiments. This one says, wishing you all the best. I really like how large they are. They really draw your eye to the sentiment, which sometimes can get a little lost on all the things that we have going on on our cards. I'm using the darkest ink color from that Martian terrain set to stamp the sentiment, which I think is a really fun idea to use color to stamp sentiments. I often, mostly, stamp them in black or white heat embossing. So to use a color and to have the ability to use a color because I have from very, very light to very dark in that spectrum of colors is really fun to have. So wishing you all the best popped up. I don't think this card needs much more, but you could add some accents if you want. Next up, I'll be using Coffee Break inks, especially this one color from the set and a stamp from a previous release from the Flower Shine collection. I love creating my own backgrounds. It's really easy to hold the cardstock in place with the stamp wheel and don't worry about stamping off the edge which I think adds a really nice touch to backgrounds because you can easily clean it off with a little bit of water and a little bit of a rag or paper towel or something like that. Then I went back to Misty Moore to create this little sort of sunburst in between the star in between the flowers just to add a little bit more of the background so it wasn't so much white space. I used another color from the Coffee Break set to stamp You Are So Lovely, which is another sentiment from the Uplifting Sentiment stamp set. Once I have it stamped out, I can die cut it very easily. And I'm using that swipe technique to create edges around this piece of cardstock that I die cut the sentiment out of so that I can use it as a mat for my pattern background that I created. Here's all the cards that I created with different colors of inks. Now let's check out some of the other supplies that are available, things like stencils and dies, and use those to make some cards. First up, let's check out a new tool that goes along with the all new stamp wheel. As you can see, the original flip cover plate for the stamp wheel has radial images. 
on it. That means lines that are going from the center to the outside. This is the new stamp wheel square grip flip plate. So instead of having those sort of rays coming out from the center, this grip plate actually has a grid on it, which I really love. Don't forget to take off that plastic cover on one side. Your flip cover plate should be clear. This new plate has a hole at the bottom. That hole allows you to track if you are going to do, say, stamping and then 90 degrees flip and then stamping and then 180 degree flip, that will allow you to track that. The grid will really allow you to line things up on an A2 card or any other type of card that you're creating. I love working with a grid because it makes it really easy to line up sentiments. So for the flower, I'll place it down on the cardstock, pick it up with the grid, flip it over, and then I'll use that grid to place my sentiments. The sentiments is the most important part, I think, to get straight, so using the grid is a great way to go, and you can work around a large image stamp that you already have on the grid and make sure everything is lined up exactly the way you like it. Flip it over just to double check, and check that out, then I have everything lined up exactly where I want it, and then I can flip it back over and ink it up. For this example, I'm using the dried petals ink pad set. So there's a light pink and then it gets darker from there. Here's Berrylicious, which here in this example I'm using on the sentiments and I used the lighter color on the flowers. I'll flip it over. You can see that it's all nice and lined up using that grid and then I'll stamp it out. The great thing about the stamp wheel though is once I turn this over and see what the outcome is, I can add more color. So I'm adding more color to the flower, a little bit of a darker color as well, swiped on from the bottom, and then I'll flip it over once again and stamp that and make sure that my sentiments and my flower are exactly as dark as I want them. I like how everything is except for the friend stamp I want darker to really stand out. So I'll stamp that up again and check that out. I can get really a variety of colors, a variety of of shades and everything nice and straight with that grid plate. Next, let's use the Altenew Sweater Pattern Stencils. This is a dual stencil set, so I'm using the stamp wheel to hold both the cardstock and the stencil in place, and then I have one of those sort of medium size ink blender brushes. They're sort of short and squat, but they make it really easy just to hold the handle and then add as much ink as you want. I've mentioned before I'm very heavy handed. I like tools like this that help me apply a light impression and then go darker if I want. I'm placing the second stencil. I wanna make sure I line it up just right. So then once I have it in place, I'm going to remove the first stencil and then I'll use a darker color of the dried petals ink. This time I'm using Berrylicious. It's such a gorgeous color. All of the colors that are released this month are absolutely stunning and very unique. This is the Through the Window die set. We'll use most of it later, but for this card, I just cut out a couple of pine boughs. I'll stamp a sub-sentiment that says, sending you hugs, and I'm gonna use that as my main sentiment. I'm stamping it on the same color that I cut out the pine boughs, and I'm white heat embossing on top, and then cutting it into a nice straight sentiment strip. So once I have all those pieces, I'll be able to add liquid glue to the sentiment strip and have it justified to the right and then pop up those little pine boughs on little bits of dark black foam adhesive so they can't really be seen from the front they won't stick out like an eyesore with which white adhesive foam adhesive might just do that so there you go a very simple card with a little bit of accent to it. This is the Majestic Mountains stencil set, and I'll be using that with the Coffee Break ink pad set. And starting with the first stencil, I'll work around the edges first because the center, I'm going to do just a basic ink blend in the center. I want those edges to be just a touch darker. So the highlight on the mountain is going to be in the center of the mountain here, the last place that I cover up. 
and I love these stencils because the stamp wheel holds them in place so well and they're so detailed that they make it look like I watercolored or painted this mountain. Obviously, I do not have that skill. And so using stencils to create something just as beautiful just is, makes me happy. It's so much fun. And I love combining ink colors and seeing what you get at the end. Like, I don't even know where this is going 100% because I don't understand the little bits of color adding here and there that create the end picture. So it's almost like a surprise at the end when I peel off that last stencil and you're like, I just made this gorgeous mountain range. <laughs> so here's the darkest color in the Coffee Breaks ink pad set. It's called Espresso. You can see how dark it is. So you only use it for the teeny tiny bits on the very last stencil. Then when you peel it off, just check that out. Absolutely gorgeous. For the sentiment, I'll use an uplifting sentiment stamp once again with Versamark so that I can heat emboss it with some gold embossing powder. I think gold embossing powder will go really well with that mountain that we created with the stencils. This one says shine bright. I'll add a little piece of tape to the die to hold it in place so that I can cut it out. It cuts out the words separately so you can either have them next to each other or on top of each other here I think it works best on top of each other popped up a little bit and check that out you don't need much more than that this is the snowy stars 3d embossing folder and I love geometric designs like this I've embossed it on white cardstock and then I'm using the ink pads from several different ink pad collections to swipe across on top of those snowflakes to make, add a little bit of color there. Also, I'm using the Altenew enamel dots that are released this month. They're really pretty colors. And swiping ink on an embossed panel like that really helps the design of the embossing folder stand out. So I've cut that down to four by five and a quarter. I'll mat it on some dark blue cardstock. And then I have a little sentiment that says thank you. And I'm stamping it on a scratch piece of white paper that I've already die cut something out of. And I'll ink that up with some of the dark blue from the Glacier Caves ink pad set that we already took a look at and again like I said it's really nice to have dark colors so that you can stamp some of your sentiments in color and still have them really stand out. Next up is the wood stove fireplace die set. Look at all the dies that come in the set and what you can create with it. It's so much fun. So to create just little spots of color I'm using some of the inks for the firewood for the fire itself and and then I'll be able to use just basic colors of cardstock for the fireplace. But these three little dies, I thought it would be perfect to just swipe a little ink and then die cut them out. Here's the rest of the dies and then you can start putting it together. It's very easy to assemble. Just follow the guide on the front and you'll be good to go. So here I have the sort of base center place of this fireplace and then I'll be able to put the log inside the fireplace as well as the fire itself and then we'll decorate the outside of the fireplace. So I'm using liquid glue for all of these little die cuts and I feel like that just allows me to shimmy them into place a little bit if I don't have them super straight at first. I did cut all of the sort of handles and mechanisms of the fireplace out of gold mirror cardstock just to add a little shine. For the background of this card, I'm using some of the green inks that I have. I have aloe vera here. I'm covering the entire panel with aloe vera. I have it on the stamp wheel so that I can then use that sweater pattern to create color on top. So I use the lightest green for the background, second darkest for the first stencil, and then third darkest for the second stencil. And I feel like the way that I have the lightest color in the back and then these two colors on top, it almost looks like wallpaper. That's what I was hoping for anyway, is kind of a wallpaper look for behind this fireplace. I also have those uh, Build-A-Garden Blossoming Freesia stamps that say 
for, for my cherished and then friend. And I started them with one color of ink and then when I saw it, it wasn't really standing out so I stamped it in another color of ink as well. Then I'll pop up that fireplace on some black foam tape and that's just it for this card. I think there's so many little details that you don't need much more than that. I'd mentioned before that we'll use through the window die set for a full card and this is that card. So I cut the panes out of white cardstock. I'll also be cutting them out of some sort of yellowish cardstock here that I've created with one of the inks. And I'm creating my background with a bunch of the Glacier Caves inks. So I'm starting with the lightest color, knowing that I am going to build up darker and darker and darker. And I'll be going to the second and third darkest colors in the set as well. I really want to create this kind of blustery looking sky that is close to complete sunset and I'll spritz a little water on this. I haven't shown this yet with these inks but look at how reactive they are. Then I put a little tissue down to pick up some of the excess water but just check out that background. It really creates the look of a snowstorm in a almost night sky. So I have the window panes glowing because there's light coming from the inside. Then I have the shutters here on the outside. Now I did not plan for how wide this was going to be. So I will have to cut off a little bit of the shutters, but that's easy enough to do. Just flip over the card and cut off anything that hangs off the card itself. And then when you flip it back over, it still looks like they are shutters next to the window. I have those little pine boughs that I cut out before, but this time I'm adding berries to them as well, just with a little bit of liquid glue. And then I use an embellishment tool to pick up those little teeny tiny die cuts off my glass surface. This die set comes with several different looks for the window. There's like a spring look, but this is the winter look. It's got a little snowman, little pine boughs. I really love this snowman. I think he's so cute. He's got little eyes, carrot nose, mouth, buttons, arms, a hat, and a scarf all in one little die. So you definitely need something like an embellishment tool to help you like put these little pieces together. But once they come together, they're just so cute. It's totally worth that little bit of effort of finding little teeny tiny die cuts. I love how he looks on the little snow drift there. For the sentiment, I have a tiny little sentiment that says miss you. I'm using the stamp wheel to pick it up and then stamp it with embossing ink and then cover it with white embossing powder to make it stand out on that blustery background there. Once you heat set it, the white embossing powder really pops. I love the snowman the most. So. I could not believe how packed this amazing release is with fabulous new supplies, but I'd love to hear what caught your eye this month. Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to head under the video to the YouTube description box to find all the details about the Creative Wonderland video hop, how to enter to win, and who to hop to next. As always, I want to thank you so much for stopping by and spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon.